Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And today, we are going to talk to a dear friend, and you all know that I only talk to dear friends, and that is Brandon Lee, and he is a trustee with the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. And for those of you that have been with me forever, you might remember that when he was running for the office for OHA, we had him on Navigating the Journey. So he's an old friend, and I welcome you back, Brandon. Aloha. Hi, Marsha. Aloha, Marsha. <laughs> Hi, sweetheart. Um, today with Brandon, we are going to talk about the importance of people like me voting for in the OHA election. Most of us have no idea what we're voting for or why. So I have invited Brandon to talk to us about why. What's the importance of those of us that are not Hawaiian uh, to vote in this election? So Brandon? Um, I would say the importance of non-Hawaiians voting in the, um, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs election are threefold. Um, number one, it's your constitutional right to vote for the, in this race. Um, number two, it's state resources. You know, even though it's coming off of public land trust revenue from lands that once belonged to the crown and to the kingdom of Hawaii, it's still state revenue. So it's your money. Um, and number three, the biggest reason I've heard people not deciding not to vote is not that they don't understand the race, is that they don't believe it's their right or their business to vote because it should be only for Hawaiians. Now, that being said, there are a vast number of people in Hawaii who do not believe that Native Hawaiians deserve any kind of rights whatsoever. And I promise you, those people are in fact voting in the OHA race to get candidates in whose sole purpose is to tear the Office of Hawaiian Affairs down. So if you believe in Native Hawaiians, yes, so if you believe in Native Hawaiians and you want to help Native Hawaiians and you believe in what's, what you think is best for the state and that it, when Native Hawaiians thrive, the rest of the state thrives, then we need you to show up and vote. And if you don't know who to vote for, I promise you, you know somebody who's Native Hawaiian. Ask them who they would like you to support. And watch shows like Marsha's, who highlights candidates that are running. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, for 50 years, maybe, um, I'm an activist in my DNA. <laughs> and so in 1971, when I discovered this and the whole thing coming alive is um, renaissance, the, the, the discovery. And so I went to UH and found out that the Hawaiian language was taught in the foreign language department. And there was no Hawaiian uh, education of any kind. So there was one class, Hawaiian, 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 Hawaiian I guess it was. And so growing up, I guess, is what I want to say, through this whole thing of learning and discovering, and just, I really worked hard at supporting the con, con that, and then again, for the uh, creation of OHA. And that comes just out of being an activist and feeling like the Hawaiians have been mistreated like so many other indigenous people around the world that there really, it was almost an obligation for me to participate, to support. So I'm, you know, that's who I am and that's where I've been for these, what, 50 years now? <laughs> and so, so that's why I want for the rest of the audience to participate, not to feel like they are somehow shouldn't and if, oh. and like you said, that these people that are trying to tear it down, then we need enough of us to keep that from happening. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, like I said, we need Native Hawaiians need everyone else's help. 
they outnumber the rest of the state outnumbers native hawaiians three to one so you know given the dismal num um electric numbers here in hawaii right so we have one of the lowest voter turnouts in the nation um it's refreshing to hear that this year our numbers are up given that it's all mail-in ballots but still hawaii historically has the lowest voter turnout and that's probably because we're a one-party state so people just don't vote they figure it doesn't really matter the democrats going to get in but that being said it doesn't take a large number for um, interested parties to sway the OHA race because so little people voted. You know, Marsha, in 2018, when I ran for office, in the primary election, 300,000 ballots were left blank on the OHA race. Yes. Let that, let that sink in. 300,000 in a, in, a, um, in a state of 1.3 million people. That 0.3 didn't vote in the OHA race. Well, my my race was decided by 40,000 votes, which sounds like a lot. But when you consider 300,000 people didn't cast a vote, that's huge. It is. It is. When, and, you know, that's why we're doing this. That's exactly why we're doing this, to have people think about it, to say, OK, I can do this. And especially now when you can talk to your neighbors about the ballot. It's not a secret ballot. You can talk, which is wonderful. And, and we and we need them to vote. You know, I, I have many friends that are not that are non Hawaiian, and they tell me out of respect that they don't vote. And I tell them to their faces, if you're asking for permission, I give you my permission. Please vote in the OHA race. We need you to vote. We cannot afford for you to leave it blank because there are too many of those out there that would seek to tear OHA down, and they're being successful. Well, that's sad. Let me, we have a video from OHA about this whole election. It, it's dated since we are only three or four days out from the election, but we want people to see it. So if we can run the video, it's a short one, but it's still very important. Our community engagement division here at the Office of Wine Affairs serves many functions, but one time a year, Every two years, actually, we become Election Information Central. Here to talk more about our elections initiatives is Alice Silver News. As you know, Kabai Ola News is our community newspaper that is focused on the Native Hawaiian community that is published by the Office of Hawaiian Affairs on a monthly basis. And Kabai Ola News actually has a long standing tradition or history of producing voter education uh, information during election years. And this year is, we are proud to continue that tradition. Um, but instead, but it is something a little bit different. Um, we have decided to expand the voter education information that we are making available. So instead of focusing just on the Board of Trustees candidates and select candidates, we have decided to survey all of the candidates in all of the Hawaii races. What so this includes... Yeah, what, 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 are, what is the numbers that we are looking at for that? Uh, well, in total, it's 337 total candidates wow. uh, that we surveyed, and we got our back responses from 233 candidates. Um, that's about two thirds of every single candidate that is running for office uh, this year. And this year is an important year. You know, we've been, the community has been through a lot. Uh, and there's an opportunity here to really voice where we stand on the issues of importance to, to the Lahui. So um, we felt that it was important to share information um, from each of these candidates on where they stand on the issues. In addition to printing a number of these responses, we aren't able to print every single response that we collected in the printed Kabaiola, but we have our brand new platform, Kabaiola.news. So we are making um, the expanded um, survey information available as bonus content on this website. Uh, what we're encouraging people to do is to just go to the website. Uh, when you receive your ballot in the mail, uh, sit down at your kitchen table, go over the candidates that are within your district and make sure that you get, find out a little bit about these candidates 
uh, before you check the box and make make your decision on who you want to vote to represent you um, in these different offices. Now for the questions, we went through an extensive process in order to collect the questions that we um, surveyed each of these candidates with. Um, in addition to um, questions put together by our Kabaiwala editor, we reached out to our public policy program and they reached out to our DC Bureau in order to collect all the questions. We also took into account um, a survey that OHA did at the beginning of the year, an Aloha Rising survey, where we asked people, uh, what are the most important issues to you um, right now in Hawaii? And they came back with, with the top five things that they came back with uh, were affordable home ownership, proper management of land and water resources, Native Hawaiian representation in government came up, uh, poverty in Hawaii, and then also access to Hawaiian homelands. So that mix of hot button issues as identified by the survey, as well as the issues that OHA has continuously advocated for here on a state level, as well as a federal level, have been combined and shared out with the candidates. We asked the candidates to provide yes or no responses to these different issues. And as you can imagine, the issues are very complicated. And so a lot of the candidates wanted to be able to provide narrative responses or provide a little bit more information about why they said yes or no on a particular question. So we right. asked those candidates to provide us with their website information or with their social media platforms so they can share those narrative responses, share what it is um, that is being taken into account into their, their decision making. And we will print those websites and social media accounts right next to their yes or no responses. So we really encourage people to check out the issue, take a look at where, where the candidates stand on the issues, but also take the extra step to go to their websites, find out a little bit more about these candidates and why they feel so passionate about yes or no in these particular issues. Mahalo for doing you know, that work in, in trying to provide a, a balance of, of perspective and also um, uh, a format that it can be, uh, that is accessible, yeah, to the public. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely an endeavor, but I think that it is something that is definitely worthwhile. Uh, I have to give a shout out to my staff who have been working uh, double time, you know, in order to be able to provide, they've been working late nights in order to be pro to provide this information to everyone. Um, our Kabai Ola editor, Pua Fernandez Akabine, as well as our graphic designer, Kalina Pacho, have really put a lot of um, a lot of themselves into this issue. Well, mahalo nui and Alice for joining us today again. And this is such timely information as, you know, election season is upon us, right? And beginning in July, right? By mid-July, July 21st is when the ballots will land at everyone's home um, and have to be turned in by August 8th, right? So we are hosting OHA candidate forums on our own, um, Office of Hawaiian Affairs uh, Facebook uh, platforms and also on OEV TV. We're partnering with OEV TV on this so our audience can go and check out um, each of the candidates who wanted to participate or who will want to participate um, can do so in these candidate forums. And I'll just have to look down at my notes for a little bit. So for OHA Molokai and Kauai candidates, It'll be on Thursday, July 2nd from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Also on Thursday, July 9th from 6 to 8 p.m., we will have the Hawaii Island candidates. And then of course, we're gonna close out the um, candidate forums on Tuesday, July 14th with the OHA at large candidates. And again, that's from 6 to 7.30 p.m. Mahalo nui, Alice, uh, and mahalo to the team in the digital and print media staff for working those long nights. And I want to send a shout out to also our community outreach staff who's, who's out there putting this forum together um, for all of us to get educated on. Mahalo nui, oh, we hope. Aloha. Hi, Aloha, and we're back. And now, as you saw in the video about the candidate forums, all of them are online. If you go to the OHA webpage, you can view all of them 
at the same, one right after the other, if that's what you choose. And all of the things that they told you about each candidate throughout the state, it's on the webpage. You can go back to the webpage and read all of those. And today is Wednesday. I'm suggesting that you do that today. Get their ballot in the mail tomorrow. No, 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 no. No. Do not put your ballot in the mail. It is well, too in late. the drop box. Yes. In the drop in the drop if box. You, if you have not turned your ballot in yet, fill out your ballot and take it to a drop box. Do yes. not put it in the mail. It's too late. Too late. Do not okay. take that chance. Yeah, it do no, not take that chance. No, we we've been through that with Tommy Waters, so we know what yeah. what that is. So okay, the drop box. And they're great because all you have to do is drive up to it and drop it in. Yep. And they pick it up every day. Yep. The, the clerk's office picks up the the mail, the ballots every day. Be and sure it has, to, it, it yeah. has to be received by the Office of Elections by 7 p.m. Saturday. So be sure your signature matches the one that's on file. Because if it doesn't, they send it back to you and then you, who knows what happens after that. But do go to the webpage, OHA webpage. Take a look at all of the forums. They're really good. And you'll learn a lot. And that way you make informed choices. And that's important. And uh, Brandon, let's go back. Why? Okay. Why? Tell us again. Why people non-Hawaiians, whether you're an activist like me or not, uh, if you're new to Hawaii, why we as uh, residents of Hawaii need to vote? Uh, well, like I said, it's threefold. Um, number one, it's your constitutional right. So don't let anybody ever tell you that you don't have the right to vote because you do. So um, number two, um, it's state resources, you know, it's the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, but it's state resources. So you should have a say in how your state resources are managed and used. And three, if you believe in um, Native Hawaiian rights and that Native Hawaiians need a say, then we need your help and we need you to vote because there are um, far too many people in Hawaii who do not believe that. And as I said earlier, I promise you they are showing up to vote in the OHA race and they are purposefully voting for candidates that seek to tear the Office of Hawaiian Affairs down and they're succeeding. So we need you to show up and vote. If you don't know who to vote for, like Marcia said, go and look at the OHA website um, and you can judge for yourself. If you're still unclear or unsure because you're not familiar with Native Hawaiian issues, no matter what the candidates themselves say, you don't know if they're saying good things or bad things. Go and find someone to ask. I promise you there, there is no way you live in the state of Hawaii and you don't know somebody who's not Native Hawaiian. Just go and ask, ask a Native Hawaiian who they want you to support. That simple. Yes. And um, Brandon, how can we reach you if you wanted somebody to talk? They didn't know anybody. They just saw you today. Can, is there a um, way to, is yes, there a contact um, they for can, you? Yes, they can go to um, my my candidacy Facebook page. Now, don't let that confuse you. I'm not running for office this year. Um, I'm on a four-year term, so I'm halfway through my term. But my candidacy page on um, on Facebook is still live, and it's Lee for OHA, L-E-E, -E, the number four, OHA. Um, or they can email me directly at Lee for OHA at gmail.com. Um, they can go to my official trustee page, but I prefer that they not do that. Um, I, would, I would not be comfortable helping people with the election through my official capacity as a trustee. So um, go to my candidacy Facebook page, again, Lee for OHA um, on, um, on Facebook, or they can go to, they can email me directly at Lee for OHA at gmail.com. Now, we only have a minute left. But what I wanted to know is, as a trustee, what is ex what is your job? My number one job is a fiduciary. I have a fiduciary responsibility to the Native Hawaiians. So I have a legal responsibility to look out for the best interests of Native Hawaiians. 
And there's a whole host of things that will take much longer than a minute to get into. That well, that's okay. That. We can take two. <laughs> <laughs> um, Go ahead. But, but um, you know, I have a fiduciary responsibility to oversee and grow mm -hmm. the Native Hawaiian Trust. Um, I have a responsibility to oversee the land holdings of um, not just me, all, all nine trustees, to oversee the, the land holdings of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs and to make sure that we grow those assets so that we can allocate funds out to help support not just Native Hawaiian programs, but the health and well-being of Native Hawaiians. Now, there was uh, one question that came up Sunday. And that was about Kaka'ako and the okay. development of Kaka'ako. Now, I'm not sure that I understand that, but what what does that mean, the development of Kaka'ako? So in a, um, in a settlement with the state of Hawaii for past reparations due to Native Hawaiians, the state of Hawaii deeded Kaka'ako Makai. So that's um, not all of the lands, but uh, I want to say off the top of my head, seven lots um, south of Alamona Boulevard. Um, so just is that near, the, is that near the the, um, the ooh, okay the medical school? Yes, so it's that same area that that for lack of a better word that little peninsula. So. Um, so the Office of Hawaiian Affairs owns all of those lots. So the development they're talking about is the development of those lots. What would you? What kind of development? Um, originally, when um, OHA was deeded those those lands, it was told that they were OHA would be able to develop residential units. Um, and then, as soon as it was signed over, a law was passed not allowing residential units south of Alamona Boulevard. And the only property south of Alamona Boulevard is Kakaako Makai. So um, then that so went out the window. So what else can you do? Uh, right now we have several commercial um, ventures that are there. Um, there are several ventures that were deeded in already with the University of Hawaii, such as the Marine Lab out on the point at Kiwalo. Um, so there's several, um, Office of Hawaiian Affairs is looking at a, um, right now in the process of developing a master plan for the rest of Kakaako Makai. Um, we should be, um, I would love to say that we'll have that master plan completed by the end of um, the calendar year, but given COVID-19, I don't know that that's reasonable to say, um, but we are currently getting ready actually to pass a permitted interaction pig to investigate um, updating and revamping the Kaka Komakai um, policy that we have in place right now. It's extremely outdated and needs to be redone. Well, um, now we have a water issue. Change subject. We have a water issue. Would, would OHA have the capacity to look at using gray water? Is that for, for, for Kaka for agriculture, period. Um, yes, I guess. Um, I don't. I don't know how. Um, you know, that's a very that's a very individual type type of thing. So, um, like, if you're talking statewide, I don't know that the state has the bandwidth to do uh, such a heavy for the entire state to recycle gray water would require billions of dollars of new well, infrastructure to be able to do that? Well, I'm, I was thinking of the new uh, developments of farm farms and uh, large and small farms to use right. rainwater. water. Yeah. Right. And like, and that's what I meant by that's a very individual type thing, you know, that, that would be up to those individual lots, whether they wanted to do that or not. Um, I actually have looked into gray water systems and they're not cheap. So if someone got a new um, ag lot and they wanted to do gray water, they'd have to look into the feasibility of being able to um, put the infrastructure in to do that. And a lot of agricultural lots do not produce a lot of gray water. So it's diff So they would have to, that's what I meant by bandwidth of the state. So they'd have to pump gray water into those lots to be able to oh. use them because an agricultural lot, right? And no one lives on an ag lot. 
right? So there's no gray water being no produced. gray water. Yeah, yeah. But that was my big issue because you know, in in saving the planet and moving more to agriculture and a bit away from tourism. Sure. We need to look at all the ways to make that happen. So that's well, why I was asking about the gray water. Well, a better way would be to pass a law that, um, I mean, they just pa they passed. So if you build a new house, a brand new house now, you have to put a car, uh, electric car charging station in. Have to. That's the law. Uh -huh. But they just took, but they just took away all the benefits of having a um, an electric vehicle. They took away all the incentives. So <laughs> why don't they do something that would actually help? They can pass a similar law saying that if you are building a new project or a new residence, a new house, that you have to put a gray water system in. And you really, in, in Hawaii, which has every beautiful day of the year, you ought to have solar. Well, you know? I agree, but there's a whole other thing we're there, right? I mean, the whole Hawaiian Electric Company makes it virtually, well, it is. Now, they don't have any, you, you can no longer get a permit to feed um, solar voltaic electric electricity back into the grid. You can no longer get that permit. So what incentives do people have to go solar voltaic um, on, their, on their rooftops anymore? Unless they're gonna invest the extra money to put batteries on their, on their property because they cannot have um, solar electricity and feed it back into the grid. It, they, the Hawaiian Electric just will not do it anymore. So, you know, yeah, all these things are out there, but they make it virtually impossible for people to do it. Okay. So then that means that there are no Democrats <laughs> in Hawaiian Electric. Well, Hawaiian Electric is mean a publicly traded company. I mean, right. the they're, yeah. they're yeah. a publicly traded company, right? So they're doing the more electricity that's fed into their system from solar voltaic, that's less electricity they have to produce, which means that's less money they get to charge us, which means right. that's less money they make. Yes. Oh. <laughs> hey, yes. lo lo go, go and lobby your, your representative, your city council member, and your senators to force them to pass laws that forces the Public Utilities Commission to allow these type of things. It's the PUC who allows Hawaiian Electric to get away with this. And the PUC is people that are appointed. That's correct. They're not elected. They are appointed. No. And, but they're appointed by Democrats. I know. This is a Democratic state. Yeah, I know. I, I can know. count the number of Republicans in the state legislature on one hand. One hand, <laughs> yes. Yes. I, I, I know two of them. <laughs> I know them all. <laughs> yes. So, well, listen, sweetheart. It's been a pleasure spending this time with you. Now, for everybody that's listening or watching, tomorrow, tomorrow, Thursday, put it in the yellow box. Find a yellow box and put it in. Now, the yellow boxes are on city land and most of them, if they're in a park, are, will close at a certain time and that's for their own protection. So there's a map on the Office of Elections webpage yes. that shows where every drop box is located. Yes, I believe there's seven yeah. on the island of Oahu. And so if you can't find one, you can take it to the office of the, to the clerk's office at Honolulu Holly or what's the other one? The other uh, Holly. Uh, oh, Kapolei. Kapolei Holly. Okay. Those two you can drop. That, those are the safest because that's right there where they belong. But again, tomorrow, Thursday. You must do it. You must, you must. We don't want to mess up like we did with uh, our city council person, Tommy Waters, to go to the Supreme Court and all of that. No, we don't, we don't want that. We want it clean. We want a fair election. Please. Please. Okay. Well, Brandon, it's always a pleasure spending time with you. Thank you and, for having me, Marsha. It was my pleasure. And we're going to watch, keep watch on OHA. So again, thank you all. And we will see you next time.